didn't really think you could win at the time because I think Renault were out there with a the turbo engine with loads more horsepower than our Cosworths had. And lo and behold, John goes and wins at Silverstone. I mean, you know, John Watson, British driver, Silverstone, first year of a carbon monocoque car. I mean, it was just, you know, it was ridiculous, really. But the trouble was, we were so small in those days, the teams were so small, it was, you, were just, you were just running as hard as you could to, to get to the next race, to, to develop something and sort the problems out. Because, you know, the first time we ran the car in Long Beach, um, I'd done something with the exhaust pipes. I'd tried to flatten the exhaust pipes to minimize the body profile at the back. And I'd run them too near the bodywork and, the, and we, had a, we had a problem with the bodywork catching fire over the exhaust pipe and all this kind of thing in the Long Beach and you know it was all these sort of things. So all that had to be got over by the next race and so on and so on. And they're just not that many people. I mean you know it was just so you were just flat out all the time. The, the carbon revolution in Formula One as was talked about sort of some years ago. Um, I think what McLaren are doing now, of, of going back the 30 years and joining the Formula One car to today's MP412C, I think, I think that really rams it home. I mean, I, you know, I don't know, when you're in Formula One, you're not really looking at the history. Yeah. You're, you know, Formula One's all about, oh, that was good, you know, it was the last race. Yeah, that was nice. What are you going to do for the next race? And that's, you know, that's how you live in Formula One. You know, what's my next step? Where do I find the next tenth? How do we, you know, it's just, it's just non-stop. And uh, it's really days like this that actually ram home, you know, what, what's happened. I mean, there are a few other things that I'm responsible for afterwards, but the carbon monocot was such a, look back at it, and it's such a, it was such a commitment. It was such a, there ain't no plan B, you know. <laughs> that you think, you look back and you think, were we a bit nuts? <laughs> and, and you think, well, probably. I mean, but, you know, hey, I was young, you know? What the hell, you know? And, um, and, and you know, it was, you just believed and you did it. You know, get on with it. Don't look back. I can see the technology coming down the pyramid towards let's say higher priced production cars and eventually down to your mass produced cars. But before you get there, technology will have to evolve so that it can be, there'd be a lot more automatic handling. I mean, one of the problems with carbon even today, even on the MP412C, is that that's got to be hand laid up. The actual basic material has got to be put in the mold tools by hand, laid up by hand. That doesn't happen on mass production cars. It's all automatic. It's robot this, robot that. Um, so, you know, it's there's a ways to go before you can handle carbon like that. I mean, what they've done here is a big step forward. This, the closed mold, the the resin infusion systems, and all that kind of thing. That's taken it a step on. But there's still a lot. Of, there's still a hand element which for mass production I think is a no-no, it just can't happen. I mean, you could take plants to China, you could take plants to India, wherever, South America, where hand labor is much cheaper. But there's an element of quality that has to be maintained as well. With carbon composites, it's much more difficult to find a problem in the basic layout, the basic manufacture of the, of the part. So you have to believe that people doing the job have done it 100%. That's not to say it can't be done in China, India, South America, whatever. But it's not a production process. And that, and that, that will have to come, that will have to change.